All right. We'll get this puppy started. So I do have, uh, well, when, we, when the folks get in here, I'll, I'll let you know I have a question for everybody. Oh. I got a, I got a warm up special question for everybody. Nice breaker. Hey, hey, Jay, Alan, Anthony, Dan, Daphne. Wow, Sherry, Peggy, we got a ton of people. Tim Cook, Tim Cook's here from Apple. Wow. No, I don't think so. I don't think that's right. I don't think so, Tim. <laughs> that's going back. If anybody knows what that's from, uh, I don't think so, Tim. You can put that in the chat if you want to. But the question today is who is your, who's your favorite musical artist or performer? Um, now it could be singer, guitar player, all that kind of stuff. Where are you from and who is your favorite uh, performer? I have something to share here that, and Zachary, you can come alive for a minute if you want to share out your screen, your um, your video, because you got a story about this cat right here. For those of you. Whoa, that's amazing. It is. Amazing. That, uh, that, that is our boy, Ed Sheeran. Uh, Zachary and I went to to see him in Wales. So uh, I know that's one on the front right. row by chance. We, we were in the front row. No way. That's right. We wow. were definitely, we were right there up there on the rail um, with, with him. But Zachary, why don't you share out for a second while, right before we get started while everybody's looking at this. So the question is, first of all, where are you from and who's your favorite musical artist? And go ahead and tell the story. Zachary, are you gonna share your video? I can't because I'm a, uh, a panelist. Oh, I have to make oh. you a co-host. There you yeah, go. No worries. Hey, Dave, I'm Rafael here. Rafael Marrero has to be a co-host as well. Hello, sir. There he is. Morning, Rafael. All right. Hey, so we only here. got three people. All right. So uh, let's see. Minaj, Nicki Minaj. All right. Mick Jagger. Love it. Mm -hmm. From Albuquerque. Prince from Dallas. Billy Joel from Tony. All right. Willie Nelson. Oh man, Kiss reunion tour in Dallas. Love it. They're, they're they're doing a final, I think, aren't they? I don't think I have a favorite from Utah. All right. Yolanda. Effie Morin. Wait a minute. Bob Seeger. Nice. Nice. That's a winner. Prince as well from Aaron. <laughs> sure, it's final, Julie Francis. <laughs> All right. Greetings from Orlando. Kid Rock. Chili Peppers. Patty LaBelle from Rhea. Love that. All right. Tammy from Houston. Man, I can't. It's coming in so fast. NF. All right. Uh, BTS. Man, I'm showing my age. EWF. <laughs> I have no idea. Bob Dylan. I know that guy. Whitney Houston. Love that. Nice. James. James. All right. Two men. Dave Lowe's. My, oh, yeah, right, Sally. All right, Elizabeth Lowe, and then, <laughs> for those of you that know my daughter, actually, plays. All right, very good. Rush from Brian, I love it. Uh, mine happens to be, uh, I'm, I'll stop sharing this for a minute. This my Mine happens to be, do, 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 bam, wow. the boss. That's the boss. So, yeah, I've uh, seen him. And um, so, Zachary, go ahead and tell your story real quick. Yeah, so... We went to see the Castle on the Hill. I don't know if you guys know that song, um, Castle on the Hill by Ed Sheeran. We went to see the actual castle that he was talking about in that song in Framlingham, England, uh, which in case you're wondering is uh, an incredibly small town. Uh, about 3,200 people live in the entire town. Um, and so as we went there, we, we uh, went to a pub and, and drank a couple of drinks while we waited for another pub to open because they don't eat in England. I don't know if you didn't know that. Um, mm. They don't eat food over there. Uh, <laughs> I'm being somewhat it's sarcastic, but they, they'll serve food from 12 to 3. They'll say, all right, it's 12 to 3, and that's that's the time we serve food. And then the rest of the time, we're just a bar. Um, so we we went to this one, uh, the only one in the town that had food. And um, and they, they opened up at 6 p.m. And then my dad looks over at me and says, Ed is at the bar. And, True story. Uh, that is so and, cool. And the look on his face said, "Hey, Ed is at the bar right now." <laughs> so we went. I I, uh, I looked over. I saw Ed and his and his wife, and she was swaddling their newborn uh, that was probably four or five days old at this point. And uh, 
Yeah. So, so we, I, I, uh, garnered up the courage to go over and talk to him and, and, uh, tell him how much I appreciated his music. And then I, uh, about peed myself as I was waiting for him to leave the, <laughs> leave, leave the place. So but, cool. uh, it was, it was a good time. I love oh, that you awesome. didn't get a selfie. I love that it was more about you and Ed at the yep. bar having a brewski as opposed to you getting a selfie. I mean, I, I don't know if I could have done the same thing, just so you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a, he's, I've, I've listened to hours of Ed Sheeran interviews and yeah. I'm, I'm a massive fan, obviously. So uh, I know how important it is to him that he kind of gets to have his hometown as his hometown. And uh, oh, he doesn't have Martin that Ed in a meet and greet, go Martin. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's fantastic Ari got to saw the balls perform with Coldplay last week at MetLife <laughs> I am super jealous I almost bought tickets to go see uh, the boss in Spain uh, yeah. but I decided I'm just going to wait and, and take everybody here that's awesome Ari I appreciate that good Coldplay not bad either right so very cool very cool very cool all right so the, if you missed it favorite where you're from who your favorite artist slash uh, musician is and we're going to get cooking because we got a crap ton of stuff to do today. So we're, I want to make sure we keep moving so that everybody knows why we're here. It's $1.5 trillion 2022 budget. We are in Q3 right now. So guess what? All of this money has to be spent by 930 just because you think it's we're, we're, we're in Q3. We're almost in Q4. We might as well call it Q4. So if you want to get if you want to win anything, if you're not in on it yet, you need to get moving. And we got some ways to be able to do that, show you how to do that today. And participation is easy. You've already started with doing the chat. You can do raise your hand uh, and if, if you, or uh, for in Q&A, make sure you pop your Q&A in there uh, in those because we got over 100 people and it'll get crazy. So if you have a question, pop it in the Q&A. If you've been living under a rock and you don't know how Zoom works, you can go up the top and you do side by side and make a, you can do whatever you want as far as how you want to see us, make us bigger or smaller. Links in the chat will be the Winnable Opportunity Matrix, ISI Federal, uh, VA Procurement Readiness. Do we have yours, Raphael? Yeah. Is that done? It's done. It's done? Put I yours sent. in there, too. Okay. So Raphael also has a, a procurement readiness. Put a link to it so that they can get to it. And the 90-second challenge, because we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. Real quick, I'm Dave Loam, the CEO of ISI Federal. We help with data marketing, business development support, as you see there. A couple of things that you might recognize on the right-hand side, you might recognize GovBrief. We, we do that marketing for folks, uh, for industry as well. Uh, but it all starts with getting smart with market essentials. We built programs and systems around this to help you understand your market and connect with the buyers. GovBrief is how you can help, help reach you, help you reach stakeholders. Um, and speaking of GovBrief, uh, Sally will be joining me on the 23rd. Brian Hebel, I'll be joining him on the 22nd. <laughs> so we're kind of got this thing going on. We got uh, the 22nd. We have a deep dive with HHS. HHS just changed their directory so you can't get their contact information. So we're building a system to be able to go back and grab. And we have all the, that contact information that, that we're going to provide. On the 23rd, we're going to be talking about infrastructure contracts. That, that's a big, big deal, flowing the feds into the states. So those are all part of that process. Uh, then we also have SAM.bid with, uh, with the AMP system. It monitors SAM.gov and provides you an unfair advantage. And that is one of the craziestly awesome system that you'll find. For those of you who are already using it, you can pop in here if you want to say how great it is. And if you haven't started using it, check it out today. And also, we monitor GSA eBuy. We'll talk a little bit about that today, but and we'll give you a, a dose of monitoring SAM.gov as well. We have the good Dr. Marrero. Uh, I'm going to give you a check a, a minute, a few minutes, in, to talk about your book coming up, Rafa. I'm going to get through the introductions. We're doing a little different today than we've been doing it. So, because I I have to get out of here right at noon, because I have a briefing at one. So, uh, but Rafa helps with helping with your brand, with your certification, socioeconomic certifications, helps with um, some of the loans that are out there for small businesses. As, and uh, he's, he's also a great author and you can reach Jonathan from Rafael Marrero right there. We have great, is Greg here? Where's Greg? Where's Greg? All right, we won't call it Greg. Here is spirit. Greg's here is spirit. 
<laughs> but he helps with proposal writing, GSA skills and development and other contract vehicles. Hopefully he pops up. If he doesn't, uh, we'll cover for him. He's a great guy. Absolutely uh, can help with that. Sally White will be talking about LinkedIn today. She's an Uber, Uber connector. Uh, networking, absolutely awesome. And a LinkedIn maven, if you've read anything like the tipping point from, from Malcolm Gladwell, you will recognize how she fits in as a maven for that, helping with social media opportunity teaming. Peter Timbus helps with funding. Well, you're going to be first up, Peter. You can talk about your funding in just a minute. And Brian Hebb, I don't think Brian's here today either. He's retired from CMS. He's probably at the beach, mm -hmm. but he's an author. And we do a lot of briefings together now because of his insight from the inside and how we help to, to, to do that. So what are you after? You after active opportunities, reaching federal stakeholders, anybody that touches the government universe, you are in the right place. Today, we're going to be talking about reaching buyers, contracting officers, specialists, specialists uh, politicals, and program managers as part of that process. If you missed a session, you can go to YouTube. They're all up there. And you can find all of us there. You can see some of us in, in, in hats from Santa Claus. I'll give you a guess on which, which one that was. Saturday. All right. <laughs> a quick disclaimer. This is not affiliated or endorsed by GSA. It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee an award if you participate. And if you happen to be from the government, this is for you. It does, this is no indication or endorsement of or commitment to purchase from any vendor. That way you can participate as well. So the real first question is, why in the world did you decide to come here today? Are you new to federal marketing? Um, do you have, a, have contracts as a sub? And, or do you have prime contracts and want to grow? Or some nut sent you an email? So <laughs> there you go. You gotta, there's got to be somebody. That, well, there's already five people that calling some calling me nuts. All right, nuts. fantastic. All right, so let's start here. Because while you're filling that out, if you already have a contract, you might be saying, how do I fund that contract? And that's why Peter's here. And you got a little secret thing for the front end of that too, right, Peter? Absolutely. We've been funding government contractors over the last 31 years. The biggest impediment to growing your business is once you identify and win an opportunity, where do I get the capital to fund that opportunity? And that's what we step in because we will lend to your opportunity rather than your financial statements. So whether you're a brand new company or you've got 5 million of revenue, 20 million of revenue, uh, my biggest customer is 100 million of revenue, we'll be there to finance you because we're going to lend to your need on that contract. Most of my clients say to us, boy, I wish I had uh, known about you three years ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. Yesterday, I was talking to one of my clients from Alabama got out of the Air Force four years ago. He said, Peter, we just got this big contract. Now we're doing 13 million a year. Now that's in just four years. And he said, thank you very much. But because without you, without your funding and your financial support letter, which has allowed us to win seven contracts. So if you get an opportunity and you're putting in your proposal, we will provide you with a letter of financial support that'll state to the government, should you award this contract to this company, that we will be there to support that effort. So you take the access to capital question out, out of the equation. So we're very good, we're very responsive, and we're willing to help anybody that uh, wants to grow their company. Love it, love it, love it. Did I stop that kind of, I stop that one apparently? All right, cool. Let me see. Is that, now, so the next one is, do you, what would you like from Peter? Oh, wait a minute, that's not it. Peter, please help me. There it is. All right, so help me. But, let, let me make sure, let me make sure that, that folks understand. You can help them with, with a, what is that called with your before contract is called? Financial support, financial support letter. Uh, financial support letter. Financial support letter. And so that says to the to the buyer that you have the wherewithal. So this happens when you have, let's say you're a million dollar company and you just, you want to bid on a $10 million opportunity. Right. You need to show that you can support that. So right. let, let us know what, what you can do for Peter. And we'll talk about that. So if you're new to the federal market, here's, here's a situation. 
and there's a lot of folks that are new to the federal market. It's a new, this, this world does not operate like, like the, the commercial sector or, or, or uh, doing B2, B2C, right? So it's a new perspective, new experience and new business approach. And guess what? The federal government doesn't operate the same. So if it doesn't operate the same, if this is true, you cannot play the federal game the same way as you play what you do with your regular business. There's a lot of similarities when it comes to building relationships, absolutely. However, if you're playing the game, you got to play it the way that they want to play it. So if you want to play, how do you play? How do you win? And here's the deal. The game, let me, let me end this poll in three, two, one, and there you go, Peter. You got a couple folks that, that, that want to talk with you about that. So the game isn't played the way that you want. It's played the way they want and the way they want to play it. So if you want to get into the game, it's not, it is not about you. It's about them. If you put, if you, and if you back up and say, hey, this is what we want. We want to play in this space. However, you need to understand what they want and when they want it and the way they want it. And that's why we're here today. We're going to be, Sally's going to be up to talk about how we can win with LinkedIn. But before we even get there, let's talk about preparation. Dr. Rafael Marrero, let me change my glasses. Me too, me too, me too. Everybody's changing glasses. Everybody change your glasses. So, so Rafa, do I not have you? Mo yep. Can you not I'll share your video? Okay, I'm there here. you go. He's back on. He's wearing his Stanford hat. He's got new sexy glasses that match his beard and his hat. <laughs> that is just too cool. Go ahead. So tell us about your company first and then tell us about what they need from capability standpoint, because you want to look strong in this, gov this space, right? Absolutely. I'm going to keep it brief. My firm specializes in helping uh, reposition small businesses uh, to, to enter the large supply chain from a branding, marketing, and content standpoint. So we are a specialized business to government management consultancy, and we offer strategic communications. We help you brand and look the part uh, the right way so that you create a lasting first impression with uh, government buyers. So whether it's a, a, a great capability statement that captures the six C's, uh, aesthetically pleasing and, and complete and accurate to uh, your capabilities briefings, your website, your business cards, uh, your pitch decks, et cetera, uh, all of these components we handle in-house. We have a creative team in-house. We don't outsource any of our work. And we work on great, great looking capability statements that really, really uh, get other people's attention. And not only that, but we've focused on marketing capabilities as a contractor in your website to make sure that you have the website and the information on your website and the web presence that government buyers and, and primes are looking for, right? So we help you stand out in a crowded marketplace by highlighting the essential information that buyers and partners are looking for. Fantastic. Thanks. And how, how important is it to have a rocking capability statement? It's very important. And I speak from the vantage point of a former uh, procurement executive and procurement, uh, C-level procurement executive in a large private sector uh, in charge of supply chains and vendor management. Uh, I sat there and I evaluated hundreds of vendors every year that came knocking on our doors to offer their products and services. And just by taking a quick look at their capability statement, or by doing a quick review of their profile or their pre-qualification form, which in this case is SAM, right? Uh -huh. Think of it that way. I can tell that they were not procurement or contract ready. They were not ready to go, ready to do business with me. So I've turned this into a full-on consultancy to help companies like yours become acquainted with and effectively penetrate the federal market with good solid materials that, that, that will be well received by your potential clients. And, and you also mentioned uh, SAM.gov, right? Making sure yes. that the, yes. the SAM.gov matches. All of this should be congruent, right? Absolutely. There, there needs to be a complete connection and consistency across all channels with your past performance, socioeconomic certifications such as SBA, 8A, et cetera, mm -hmm. but also technical professional licenses, right? So if you're in engineering, you need to have certified, you know, some type of engineering proficiency and and the credentialing to go with that. If you're an IT firm, you know, you probably have ITIL, you probably have PMO, PMI certification for, uh, for PMPs, right? And program managers. Mm -hmm. All of these things need to be highlighted in such a way 
that they convey the right messaging and, and project fast. a position. That's right. What's that? Fast. It needs, yep, that's to, right. it needs to communicate fast because that's right. we're, we're all about mental real estate and you've mm-hmm. got to communicate with them fast. Mm-hmm. So, and, and I, let me say this, I, you and I connected what, about four years ago or something? Yes, sir. That's crazy. And we've done some, we've done some events together. Uh, I, I tell you, anybody that asks me about capabilities, I tell them you got to talk to, to the good doctor. And you happen to have, you happen to be writing some kind of literature. Right <laughs> yeah. Now. Yes, uh, we're publishing uh, America 2.0, the U.S. War of Independence from China, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, the second edition of Uncle Sam's Secret Sauce and other books. So we have about four books coming out in the next year. Our first one coming up next is our second book, actually, Fourth uh, of July, uh, and it's gonna it's gonna turn some heads and and raise the issue of our toxic dependency on on China and our need to be self sufficient as a as a world power. Well, well, there you go. So Rafael Marrero is in, is in the business of of this. He can help he can help you get your salmon shape. He can help you get a rocking capability statement. And if you happen to maybe you don't even know if you can get a socioeconomic certification. How much does it talk to you, cost to talk to your group to find out if you can even get a socioeconomic certification? The consultation is free, and and, the, and here's the thing. Yeah, we're gonna definitely determine if you are a good cali- a qualified candidate. We've certified thousands of, of companies throughout the years. We've worked with them diligently to help them get their credentialing, their branding, and then and then get them ready to be market ready, procurement and contract ready. And that's mm-hmm. what we specialize in. And you will see the difference. Contracting officers and small business liaison officers clearly uh, know when someone has been prepared by us because they say, this guy's one of yours or this lady's one of yours. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we go to the when we go to the events, they say you guys did a great job here. So, you know, our, our work speaks for itself. Wait till you I see do. it. And I, I honestly, I send everybody. Do I not send everybody to you? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's awesome. And there's a reason for it, ladies and gentlemen, because they're good at what they do. So so uh, I appreciate it, Rafa. Thank you very much. And now I can change my glasses back to my <laughs> non Rafael Marrero uh, presentation glasses. That's awesome. We'll keep that open for another couple of seconds. You will see in your session handouts, the winnable opportunity matrix. We use this to help you understand where you are in the federal space. Uh, Ultimately, it's about building relationships with stakeholders. And we're going to talk about specifically the program managers, administrators, because guess what? Each one of these folks have different reasons for making decisions. They have, they have different roles. They have different motives. They have personal motives. They have professional reasons to, to, to do things. And, and if you and our objective on all of these is to, number one, they need to know who we are, right, Rafa? If they don't know who we are, it doesn't do us any good. Absolutely. It's all about who knows you. That's right. And let me, I'm going to keep this open for three, two, one, and you got just the last second to, all right, there you go, Rafa. You got 26 people you got to talk to. All right. So with that, let me just let do this real quick so that we can we can get to, to Sally and what she's doing. You have contracting officers, you have program managers, you have technical representatives or cores or COTARs, depending on the agency. And then you have your senior folks, your administrators, which, which could be political appointees, uh, directors, deputy directors, senior executive services that are the top level bureaucrats within the, the agencies that are responsible for getting things done. This is not complicated. It's modified from Miller Hyman's um, strategic selling. If you look at this, the if you're one one to five, they favor you. Okay, one they they you got together with them. All right, you're all right. So uh, you know you you didn't like knock my socks off or anything like that, but you're okay. Two, they kind of like you, right? And three, they like you a lot. And we all know we have customers like this, and some people are passionate. And the real passionate ones turns in, they, they turn into coaches. So a four is a coach and five is a champion. The difference between a coach and a champion is the champions taking your flag up the hill. Not very often going to happen in the federal space. However, champ uh, coaches do happen on a regular basis. And our job as, as people that want to do business with the federal government is to, first of all, make sure they know you because they can't like you if they don't know you and then building towards getting them to like you more and even be able to help you navigate. That's what coaches do. They help you navigate. 
So notice that there isn't any middle. You can't start at zero. Well, they don't know me, so it's a zero. No, it's not a zero. It's a red flag because guess what? Every one of these people are doing business with somebody else buying something they could be buying from you. And if they don't know you, they're not going to buy from you. They have short lists and it'll blow your mind. When I started doing this in 2009 and I found out that only 2% of opportunities hit the street. 2%. And then I started to look and to see how many contracts were managed by five or fewer. 76% of the time, it's five or fewer responses. Five or fewer. That means four competitors if you're one of them. So there you have it with that. So here you go. If, they're, if, if you're in the red, they favor the competition. Not complicated. If they're in the green, they favor you. Pretty easy to understand, right? The objective is to move the buyers as well as everybody else into the green. But buyers are key because they're the ones that are spending the money, right, Rafael Marrero? They may not know, they may not know how great you are, but they will know that they, they are spending the money, right, Rafael? Absolutely. They need and here's to. the deal. They're busy, they're not going to teach you. They're risk averse. If they're risk averse and you're new, guess what? They don't like you because they don't like new things. They're experts on moving the paper. What does that mean? That means that they choose the contracting mechanism they're going to use. Is it going to go out to full and open competition? Is it going to be set aside for a woman-owned small business? Is it going to be uh, restricted between just a few, like one of three? Did you know you could do that with one of three? Yes, you can. You can do that with a pair of women-owned uh, small businesses or veteran-owned. You can do sole source for minority-owned and 8A. Right, so that there's a ways for them to be able to restrict the competition. And you're saying, but Dave, but Dave, that's not fair. Guess what? Life's not fair. And if you wanna play the game, understand how you can turn it into an unfair advantage. So they develop the contract documents and they want fast. Why? Because they got piles of paperwork on their desk and it's gonna get worse and we're gonna show you why. And guess what? Easy is good. So what's your job? Make it easy. If they want easy, Make it easy for them to be able to buy from you and always value them. There's a lot of folks that think just because they don't understand the technical aspects of what you present or what you offer, that means that they don't mean anything. I'm telling you, they spend millions, hundreds of millions, billions, some of these people, one person, millions of dollars, and you want to inject yourself into that revenue stream. And so what's the, here's my question. What is one federal relationship worth for you? Is it less than 10,000? Is it between 10 and 25,000? 25 to 50? Well, you can pick your own. I'm not going to read all those things. Because while we're talking about this, of what this is worth. So remember, this isn't just one contract. It's a relationship. The objective is a relationship. So, and it may just be that you have, you know, P cards or uh, credit cards and all you do is, you know, less than $10,000. That's beautiful because they can buy that over and over and over again, but that one person could be buying multiple times. And that's okay. It doesn't matter what the answer is. Just know this, that they will buy lots and lots and lots. Most, most people here, Rafael Marrero and Sally White, over a million dollars. Look at that, Peter Timmons. Tell me that they don't need some funding every once in a while for that. Right. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. And with the so, infrastructure, it's going to be trillions, right, Dave? That's right. It, 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 some They're going to be responsible for well, definitely hundreds of millions because the infrastructure projects are big. All right, so we're going to take a break in our regu regularly scheduled program as we're leading up to Sally. But this, this also shows you a few things. All right, I'm going to give you another five seconds to, to do this. Five, four. Three, two, 51 of 151. All right, we're putting people in 53 now and not in a coma. All right, there you go. All right, I'm going to share that out real quick so everybody can see. Look at that. 62% is over a million. And we have a bunch of folks, even less than 10,000. Doesn't matter because guess what? The federal government buys everything. Hasn't been anything we've ever found that they don't buy. So what do we all want? Wins. That's what you came here for. You want to figure out how you can get to win, right? So they give us Sam.gov. What a beautiful piece of... of uh, <laughs> it's hard to describe it, isn't it, Dave? It's hard to describe, it's a beautiful right? Piece. It's, it's a, a beautiful piece. piece. We leave that alone. 
And this is where you find opportunities, right? And that's exactly why we built SAM.bid. Why? Because SAM.gov doesn't work the way that it should, does it? If anybody loves that, man, you, we can talk about that in, in another therapy session. So, so what this does, it custom monitors, it looks at NAICS, PSCs, and keywords, and it monitors it. So as soon as it hits SAM.gov, you know first so that you can review it, then you can propose, and that gives you your wins if you're monitoring for opportunities, right? What did I say about opportunities? First of all, you can get this for $89 a month, but that gives you the 2%. So you got to be asking your, you, know, you may not even believe me. So take the 90 second challenge as part of the handouts. You can see for your own self, how many things hit SAM.gov versus how many things hit FPDS. You can do it for yourself. So this whole thing is reactive. I've been in sales. Sales is not reactive. Bids are reactive. That's okay. You still got to bid. You still got to respond. I wouldn't ignore those 2%. But how can you become proactive in being able to reach people? So 76% of, of contract awards are awarded to one in five respondents. What does that mean? That means that it's not the same people. It's one in five for that group. So that person is making a decision based on short lists. You do it. I do it. Sally does it. Rafa does it. Everybody here makes decisions based on reducing the number of competitors to people that we already know and trust. And if we don't know and trust somebody, what do we do, Sally? We go reach out to somebody and say, Sally, who do you know, right? Exactly. You try and exactly. connect with people. Yep. That's exactly right. So it's built on trust. Trust is built on meaningful conversations. And how do you get meaningful conversations? You reach out to people, you expose yourself to them legitimately, <laughs> you engage them. Got to go to the HR department again, don't I, Sam? Yes, you do. I do. All right, so you engage them, you exhibit that you have the qualifications like Raphael was talking about, and that you develop yourself as an expert in your space. And that is how you do it. And Sam that bid with AMP, so there's two different sides. SAM.bid monitors GSA, I mean, uh, SAM.gov, and the AMP system is looking at awards. And you might say to yourself, Dave, you're just telling me I'm a loser if I'm looking at awards. Yes, you are a loser. You just don't know you're a loser. So what you need to do is you need to be able to see these. And this is where it gets you to the place of the, getting the rest of the wins. Now, have to your price tag. $4.99 a month. Think about the value of the customer that you just said was worth over a million dollars, or even it's only, only $10,000 because it's going to be repeat business with those folks. This gets you to the other 98%. Now, we're, we are in the process secret of transitioning this from the AMP system to samradar.com. It's coming in the next couple of weeks. You'll probably see stuff coming out. We're going to send samples of it. If you want to get in on this, you got to do it, and then you can save, you can save half. And as long as you stay a, a user, it stays at two forty nine a month. It is the most intelligent thing of being able to dissect, right? So you say fifty percent. Sam .bid is included, so you're seeing opportunities, so that you got hundred percent, ninety eight percent plus two percent is hundred percent, Raphael. <laughs> So there you go. So how do you do it? Go to sam.gov. I mean, sam.gov. Sam.bid. Bid. <laughs> and click get started. <laughs> Choose the one that's all the way to the right that's half price and pick that one. Sign up seven days for free. And I'm telling you, this is going to get you five to 15 leads every week, which means that in a month, two months, you will have 100 people that are in your pipeline that you don't have in your pipeline today. And you can try it for seven days for free. If you don't like it, kick it to the curb, but give it the chance to be able to help you bid, build your pipeline. And then I'm going to ask you this question. What do you want to do with Sam.bid? All right. And then we're going to move on to where we're headed, which is Sally White coming up in just a minute. So let us know if you want to get in on Sam.bid now. Um, I'm telling you, you may have some other things if you want to get out there faster. We may talk about that in a minute if we have time. So I but, just have to say, I put it in the chat, but many of my customers use um, 
use the wonderful consulting AMP, et cetera, and they've never found anything like it. So huge endorsement, shout out to Dave and his team. Yep, there isn't anything else like it. <laughs> there will be, somebody's gonna copy it yep. or, or buy it. Or buy it. Dave, <laughs> or it's, buy got, it. it's got salsa. <laughs> it's got salsa. Yes. And it's spicy salsa. Yes. yes. All right, so we're gonna be talking about, uh, like I said, we're gonna talk about program managers, reaching program managers and administrators um, with Sally. And we're gonna give, I don't wanna interrupt what you're gonna do. So I'm gonna give everybody another five seconds. If you want anything to do with Sam.bid and five, four, three, two, one. All right, so we got 18, 19, last one snuck in there. Okay, very ah. good. <laughs> All right, 19 folks. So Zachary, you can also post your your uh, information in here if they would like to to meet with you directly. But you can uh, you'll get a call from Zachary or Rob from my team, and you'll do that. So the reason why Sally's here is because well, first of all, we met VFedCon, right? VFedCon once. Yeah, right. After so that was the first 100% virtual um, industry day, and that that was ever done for feds. We did it. And we turned it around really quick because we said, you know, hey, it was May of 2020. And we're like, we want to do this before the COVID thing is, comes back and, you know, it's 15 day, you know, flatten the curve. Remember those? <laughs> anyway, we'll leave that alone. Uh, Sally White, uh, let's talk about uh, what we're doing here. I'm going to make sure. Can you share? Let me make sure all panelists can share. That's the first thing. And then uh, I do have a question uh, from Martin. Do you only work with federal contractors? Do you also do state and city contracts? Martin, great question. We, we, we're in the lane of federal. Um, Dave, we can help them with uh, any socioeconomic certification for state, local, and federal. Yep. And capability statements vary from one jurisdiction to the other because the that's codes correct. are different. And that's correct. And Sally and I will be talking about infrastructure projects, which actually will flow from the feds down through the state and local governments. So there is a play here, but our... Our lane for marketing is there. Uh, everybody else's, you just heard from Raphael, he can help with the state, and so can Sally. All right, Sally, well, let's talk about Echo Wolf. When did you start Echo Wolf? Let's do. It started in 2016, um, actually at customer's request. They said, you know, Sally, there's no one out there who's sort of a trusted advisor letting us know what to buy, what to do. You kind of know everyone in nuclear and utilities and DOE and DOD. So I started Echo Wolf. Um, yes, I have a wolf. There'll be a picture at the end. So what I'm really excited about is Dave mentioned and, and Peter and Raphael and others, it's really important to get to those right individuals. And this presentation assumes that you um, have your minimum viable product or service that you've done some branding with Raphael and you have a cap capability statement, maybe done some work with Peter to get your financial support letter and that you've also done some um, uh, work with Dave to get your competitors. So why LinkedIn? I talked to a lot of people all the way from people who they don't have a LinkedIn page. They have a page they did 10 years ago with no picture, no names mentioned, Peter, and uh, or they're quite <laughs> advanced in peak in LinkedIn. But in any event, LinkedIn is the world's largest gathering of decision makers and professionals. Why? One of the reasons it's so great, it's literally free. I mean, you can do some add-ons and premiums, but you can get on there and you can actually connect with the decision makers, program managers that Dave mentioned. So here's some statistics about LinkedIn. Um, it's excellent. One of the, my favorite things is 17 million opinion leaders and 10 million C-level executives 65 million decision makers, 61 million senior and influencers. So once you've worked with Dave and the wonderful team, you're gonna understand program managers, contact managers, they may be on LinkedIn, they may not. However, if they are, you wanna be able to connect with them. So one of the important things like everything, when people work with Echo Wolf, I help them figure out their business strategy. So they may say, Sally, can you add a picture on LinkedIn? Well, I can do it and I'll show you some that we've done. I ask their strategy, is your strategy to sell your company? Is your strategy to grow it? Are you trying to pivot to the government, trying to pivot to commercial? So that the, your strategy, your business strategy informs your marketing strategy, which informs your social media strategy. LinkedIn is one social media strategy, and it's really important that you know your alignment. In other words, your buyer personas or people that are going to buy from you, are they hanging out on LinkedIn? And again, um, you want to make sure you have all the basics, your competitive, uh, your CAPE statement, et cetera, et cetera. And you want to make sure your website is optimized and it looks beautiful and all ready. So I talked to a gentleman the other day, and he called me, and I met him here, meet a lot of people here. He said, Sally, will you help me with LinkedIn? I said, sure. What's your goal? I want to grow to 10 million. He didn't have a LinkedIn page didn't have a picture, didn't have a website. So I'm thinking, you know, he's probably 
just starting. He said, I'm at 6 million now and I want to go to 10 million. So there's all these people out there who are right. doing really well and don't have any kind of presence. And now that we want to be out there digitally and connecting with the kind of people that Dave's mentioned, it's a really great thing. So the first thing you want to do is to build your profile. So build your profile, and I'm just going to show you a couple of ways as opposed to just talk. Uh, one of the ways to build your profile is, sharing my screen again. Here we go. And again, don't feel bad if you don't have, does everybody see my LinkedIn page? Yep. Great. So building your profile is really important. And so the most important part of your profile is your picture, your image, this sort of front page real estate that people see. Have a picture where you're smiling, something that's clear and crisp. I like orchids, as you can see from my background. Um, so I have that. Then you wanna make sure that you have different sections, which we'll go through in a moment, but you wanna make sure that you connect to your business page. So you wanna build a business page. And there's some really fun things you can do with business pages that I'm working now with my customers on. And one of my customers is actually on here today, I hope, and that's Jim Percuro. So Jim, again, met him through here. Like, Dave, without you, I'd literally have, like, no friends, a few customers. Thank you, Dave. I'd be on the street maybe selling orchids, pencils, who knows. So Jim has a really great company. He does direct marketing, which, by the way, has made its comeback. People are sending those little forums now that they're so true it's really so great true. it's making a resurgence and people are nodding so jim wanted a page and we wanted to reflect it for jim and then we did something really interesting which was jim's idea you can learn a lot from your customers i mean i think i know so much about linkedin every day i learn new things so jim actually we came up with these pictures but he said let's put a qr code in the picture because linkedin doesn't allow you to have a link to your website in the picture. You have to kind of go down. So this what right there. What a great idea. Is that Holy brilliant? Cow. Go like Jim, I know, so great. So then of course you want to be able to visit the website, super important. And as you can see, you have some branding going on, very good. And then you want to make sure that you connect to your social platforms. So if you're doing Facebook, again, you know, 3 billion, almost 3 billion users, you want to decide on that. And then of course, um, Jim actually has is connected to Facebook as well and LinkedIn. And then it goes back to his LinkedIn business page. Another really great one that I wanna show you again, met this person here, our own Peter Timbus. Peter Timbus. Peter, not to embarrass you, and I know you're muted, so it'll take you a minute. <laughs> tell, I'm, I'm us what, tell us what your page looked like when you found me. It was almost like a blank page. Uh, it was I a blank page, at, Peter. Huh? <laughs> It wasn't almost, it was a blank page. So yeah, Peter, I think yeah, you had a picture, maybe not. He had 500. Right. I said, Peter, you have 500 connections and no picture. So it came up with a little picture. We actually built his uh, website and his business page. And again, if you hold up your camera, everybody knows how to do it. Since we did it in restaurants for the last year, um, you could actually go to Peter's site or you can visit his site. Now this is a really important part. I don't wanna go too deep in the weeds, but if you have a website and people are connecting to you, and it goes to your email or it goes to constant contact, you're missing out on many opportunities because there's a whole ecosystem in a lead generation conversion funnel. So you want that to go to Zoho or Salesforce or somewhere so that you can actually interact with people because you basically are not quite sure where they are in the buyer cycle. And that's why you wanna inter interact, interject, et cetera, et cetera. So let's go back to building your profile, super important. Once you build your profile, Another important aspect is growing your network. This is the part I love, love, love. Especially now, since I'm going to conferences, I just went to a conference with Peter. So we ran around the conference, Peter spoke, and we had this, guess where it connected to? His LinkedIn, his website, and it talked to his conference. But the point is, is you can grow your network now. You're out there, you're on planes, you're in virtual. Um, connect with people, send, show them the love. I mean, I send congratulations, happy birthdays. And LinkedIn tells you, it'll say, hey, it's Rafa's birthday. So I can send a happy birthday to Raphael. Say Dave's anniversary at uh, ISI. So it's really important to connect and add value to others. And when I see articles or I see various things, I send them to people and I also share, I follow other pages, I request followers, I add relevant content, et cetera. So growing your network is super important. And I'll talk about some of the algorithms you can hack with LinkedIn to do that. So here we go. So once you've grown your network, 
you're always going to network. You want to build relationships. As Dave said, as we all know, that is absolute key in building relationships. Um, one of the individuals I met on a conference was Hondo Gertz. He was the former assistant secretary of the Navy. And so prior to the meeting, I sent a note saying, um, Secre Admiral, Assistant Secretary, or Admiral Gertz, I'm always very polite. I'm so excited to hear from you. And he said, great, I look forward to it. And so now we have a relationship. I would have never known that person. I'm not in the Navy. I don't know that person. So it's important to grow your relationships. Um, there's also ways to grow your relationships. And I'm just going to put in this caveat because people ask me questions about third-party apps. So there's third-party apps that can automate. They can send out massive emails and automate. It can be very dangerous because LinkedIn doesn't allow it if they know about it. And you can only send 30 to 50 days. So make sure you have someone that knows what they're doing if you're using sort of automated uh, third-party apps. So um, basically, uh, Echo Wolf, we do fierce collaboration. Fierce collaboration. This is uh, my wonderful, brilliant border collie, Sheldon Sheldon. And that's Echo 2. And that's what we do. And this is how you connect with me. I'm pretty sure if you hold up your camera, you can do that. The important thing about all of this, and I'm going to stop sharing so that Dave can have this. No, no don't stop sharing yet. I want to go. Oh, oh, never mind. I'll share That again. QR code thing is I really I can share cool. again because yeah, you taught me how to practice, code. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we don't have one of these yet, but we're going to have these. We're going to have multiple of these. We can help for, you with that. For, our, for each one of our products. And, for, and, and I know Sally's, Sally's going to help us with it. So setting that up, making sure that everything works seamlessly. Uh, that's what I, I and, and I am not uh, on the level of what uh, Sally's done with Peter. I have a bunch of contacts on LinkedIn. I spent most of my time connecting to Govies, um, but, but I see the value of it. And if you're on my side, if I see the happy birthday thing come through, I'll, I'll usually kick out happy birthdays and things like that. So that's really, really important as far as as developing. And I'll tell you why it's so important because the, there's two ways to reach the gubbies, really. There's email, the, the, the auto, at least you know electronic ways, email and LinkedIn. And not everybody's on LinkedIn, to your point, Sally. However, leveraging LinkedIn to, to, do, to do like mapping of the organization, asking somebody, hey, can you, do you know this person or are they in your wheelhouse or something like that? Or do you know this organization underneath of <clears throat> your organization and who heads it up? All of those are part of the process of develop, understanding who's, who they are and then developing the relationships. And that thin line, that thread that you can, you're, you always say this, Sally, pull in the thread. Pull in the thread. Um, love that to identify somebody and it doesn't have to, they don't have to be grade school people, right? You don't have to know, know them forever. Guess what? If, if you're asking me to introduce me to my best friend that I've known for decades, that's more risky than asking me to introduce you to somebody that I really only have on LinkedIn. And you may only have, the only thread you have is your both first level connections. Ask, ask for it. And that way you can, that, that, that person, Sally can introduce you to that person or she can, you do a lot more than that, by the way, by the way, Sally does, if, if there's somebody that wants to get into an agency, a specific agency, I call Sally, I say, this guy wants to get into the agency. She does a lot of work with DOE. So she knows a lot of people already in DOE, but it's not the fact that she knows them. It's she, she knows the process to be able to go find somebody on LinkedIn, make the connection start to warm it up and then pull you in on it. And right, that's and there's a lot of, you know, Dave, Dave, you're right. And there's so many aspects of LinkedIn. I mean, I was playing around with it last night and, and uh, Julie, uh, Julie Branson, who's also on, she actually wrote for Donald Rumsfeld. She's a brilliant writer. She actually does SEO. So she's been helping me and my customers write content and I can write your content. Julie's an amazing writer. So that's really important to have content that has keywords and LinkedIn allows you to put those keywords in. So when people are searching, they can find you. I have a lot of people that find me on LinkedIn that want to work with me. And let's face it, you know, you have your LinkedIn page, but the idea is to have an ROI, a return on investment so that you're actually selling, you're increasing your followers, you're meeting with individuals who can buy contracts. So it's really important as part of your strategy to have metrics and a marketing plan or LinkedIn like you would your others. So Julie's very helpful in that, in that 
realm. And the other thing on LinkedIn is recommendations. I mean, recommendations are amazing mm -hmm. because people use LinkedIn as a way to vet your company if you're mm -hmm. trying to figure it out. So the whole aspect, and I just couldn't cover it here, but um, if, if there's anything that I can do to be of assistance, like all of us here, feel free to reach out. We can do a Calendly. I can give you kind of a free analysis of your LinkedIn, talk to you about maybe your business strategy and help you that. find. Imagine that. We got a poll right here. If you want <laughs> Sally's help. <laughs> Imagine that. It's just like magic. When it's you magic. see with Dave, I have to tell you, it's with magic. Dave, you think it and it happens. There you go. That's exactly. It's yeah. like it's like the Wizard of Oz. Wizard All right, of Oz. so so real quick, we got a couple of questions uh, from Robert. Hang on a second, Robert Ramirez. We're looking for help marketing our small business. You came to the right place. Uh, we'll make sure, Robert, that you in, in fact make sure that you answer one of the questions that for either Sam Bid or uh, at the end of this, and we'll make sure you get the help you need. We also have your uh, your information. If you can pop it in there, that's great. Uh, Raphael so Pete, says Peter knows his stuff. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Jack says, new topic. Can we assume we'll get the all the slides or presentations, please? Um, you will get the slides from Sally. I don't know that these, the ones that I created are in there, but I'll get them for you if you if you want them, Jack McCracken. And uh, same thing with uh, advanced strategies. Can we get her slides? Yes, you can. Sure. Because that is already in place with uh, the handouts. So Zachary, make sure so I'm going to put my in information there. in, Peter's information in. Um, yep. Also, because I knew you heard a lot. I think Raphael put his information already. Dave did, but that way, and, and any one of us. I mean, we're this we're this wolf pack, this wonderful pack, and we like to help you because we are loyal and we care about you. And oh. we got one more with the chat. Let's see what was that contact. We got you, um, yeah. Robert. We'll make sure we do that. So another five. If you want Sally's help, you got five seconds. Four, three, two, one. 34. There you go. Okay, awesome. I put my information and now I'm going to put Peter's in. Yep. That's fine too. And need so, the opportunity. Yep. So there you go. So, um, so there's always questions, right? About GSA. Another part of your business development has to be making sure that you're looking at contract vehicles or responding. And normally I'd reach out to Greg Clark, but I did realize that he and his wife are in Barbados right now. So therefore, He's not going to join us today. And I know that that's just shocking that he would not be here uh, for everybody here. So you can reach out to Greg and you can, and I'll give you a chance if you would like, if you need help with GSA. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about the value of a GSA contract, also known as a GSA schedule. What it says, it says, we, the government says you're good. You, we, we looked at all the things that you have. Your pricing is good. So this is what you're agreeing to, to be able to sell to the government. You have to do best pricing for the federal government. However, there's ways to be able to work through that. And Greg knows the ways. And it's good for all federal agencies. And depending on the contract, some of the states or all of the states can use some of the contracts and some of the states can use all of the contracts, right? Does that make sense? So some contracts are actually developed like your, uh, your, your uh, professional services, ITs, things like that, that can, that can funnel to the states. They, the pricing can also be used to create blanket purchase agreements. And those mean it never has to go out for additional, it may not go out to competition at all to start with. And because your pricing is already pre-approved, you can do pricing special for an agency based on your GSA contract pricing and they can buy from you over and over and over again. Uh, and, and there's opportunities that are only available to GSA schedule holders from GSA Advantage, posting on GSA Advantage, point, click, buy, and GSA eBuy, which provides access to only people that they want to go to that are GSA schedule holders. It can be a couple. It can be all of the ones within a particular NAICS or within a, a SIN, they call it, special item number, right? And these can all be used to shortlist you to still meet the FAR requirements, which is the which are the regulations, the federal acquisition regulations that govern how people buy. And you might be saying, well, how can that possibly be fair? Said it before, life's not fair. You want an unfair advantage. You want to be one of the five. That's all you're asking. 
to be one of the five or two or one if it's a a 8a right rafael marrero 8a can be what you still there i'm here i'm here all right it can be, 8A it can can be what Set aside or sole source. Sole source, baby. That means doesn't go out with anybody. That's right. So with th for this for Greg, let's see. If you do, you need help from Greg. I know he's not here, but I promise we'll pass this information on to him. be a week before you hear from him. But if you need a GSA schedule, if you need help with a proposal, a current proposal, a future proposal, past performance, or anything like that, Greg can help you. And if you already have a GSA contract. You already got one. I want you to check out Quick Fuse. Right now is the best time to be watching um, GSA Ebon. And it's going to get crazier and crazier as we get closer to September. We built this 10 years ago for our own internal network, our own internal processes to be able to help us reach, um, to, to help us bid. It was a, it was a, it's a bid engine tool so that you know faster, you can test drive it for 30 days right now, but you gotta sign up for 30 days because as of Jan July 1st, that goes to three days because we're not giving this stuff away when, on our busiest time. Sign up now, get 30 days for free. And guess what? If you keep it for a year and you don't win five times as much as you pay for quick fuse, that's like five grand, if you don't, or one grand, right? If you don't make five grand, we'll refund all all the money that you paid for that entire amazing. Year. There's nothing to lose. I mean, it's you don't amazing. have, and I'm telling you, and, and I'll give you an answer on how many people we refunded. None because of, because it works. So if you have any questions, I'll get to the, we'll get to those real quick. Anybody got any questions, pop them, raise your hand or you can pop them in the chat. And then Greg gets 13 folks. We got that one. So here's the deal. Folks, and that's why we're here today, and then we're going to get you out of here. 80% of new contracts will be executed between July and September. July is right around the corner. We're 15 days away from July. We built our company on this. Market essentials is what we built. It's an intelligence of what happens in your marketplace. We look at the revenue segment, and those are billions of dollars, folks. Billions in each market segment. We look at the total contracts, which means 160,000 contracts made up $43 billion. The average contracts, 268 grand. 4,995 companies split that $43 billion. And these people here, the 7,331, spent three, uh, $43 billion. This is what is mind blowing when you think about what happens in the federal space. 7,331 buyers spent $43 billion. Where else can you go that you can find somebody that's playing in that space? So 80% of the new contracts and the recompete contracts, because they all do them between July and September, is happen starting almost right now. So what you need is you need buyers in your market. You need to know who's buying from your competitors and you need to know the activity that is operating, how they're operating with their activity. Why? Because you don't have any more time to be worried about anything else. You want to go to the top buyers in your space and you want to start getting yourself, getting your capabilities out in front of them, scheduling capabilities, briefings, making sure that you're pushing your information out to them so that they know who you are. Why? Because people don't buy from people they don't know. And guess what? You have thousands of people that you need to distill to say, who can I, who should I concentrate on today? And how, and you can reach out to all these guys at one time, difficult, more difficult, which is why we do the marketing that we do. $1.5 trillion by 9-30-2022, and they are all behind. Infrastructure, cyber, huge. Modernization, environmental, technology, new technologies. If you want to win, you better be in now. And I'm telling you, if you're not in now, you're already late. And that's okay. Start anyway. Go ahead, start, go ahead and get started. It'll be so early for next year, right? That's right. And that's one of the things I, great setup, Sally. Which, which starts October 1st, right? That's right. 
so, and so I mean, here, <laughs> poor Dave. So, so, so Dave. here you Don't go. Keep up, Dave. <laughs> Do you want a marketing push for Q4? Do you want to reach them daily with a steady plan? That's Sam dot bit. I already showed it to you. And do you want to concentrate on 2023? Let's talk about that. Not too soon to start talking about 2023, right, Raphael? And if you want all of the above, pick them all. But that's the idea is, is we got, got to, got to, got to get proactive if you want to win. Yes. So that's, that's the one that I was saying. If you want to talk with anybody on my team, that my lane is federal marketing. That's it. Dr. Marrero, thank you, sir. As always, thanks for Pleasure. joining us. If you want to reach out to to, to Rafael Marrero and company, Jonathan at RafaelMarrero.com. Who is Jonathan, by the way, Rafael? He's our business development manager and yeah. relationship manager with everyone on this call. And that's right. Jonathan's so anybody great. that needs anything, Jonathan is the man as far as that. Greg Clark's not here because he decided to abandon us for Barbados. Can't Why? stand that guy anymore. But if you want to reach <laughs> out to him anyway... You can you can reach out to him, Sally White. There's Sally's information right there. Sally, great information on um, on LinkedIn. I learned a lot already. Love the idea of the QR code in the in the in the picture, and, and we learn from our customers too, right? Yep. So, and super yep. quick, um, when you call me for remind me to show you how to download the LinkedIn app, and you can actually hold it up and scan directly to LinkedIn, and people think you're amazing when you do this at conferences. So I can show you that. <laughs> I'll bet they do. I think it's amazing already. Uh, nice. Peter, thanks a lot for, for help uh -huh. setting us up this time. Thank you. So uh, Peter helps with the, with the lending and the funding and getting your, your information. If you want insider information for CMS, um, Brian Hebel is your man, and he'll be joining me in an upcoming briefing, in fact, on the 22nd, along with, uh, along with Sally on the 23rd. Mm -hmm. We're talking about infrastructure. You go to govbrief.us, I'm telling you. Uh, we've done over 3,500 of these where we charged money, and um, we have not had to refund any money on that either because it's a, it is a fire hose of great information, and we don't leave them stranded, do we, Sally White? No, it's a lot of fun, too. Sometimes Dave plays the guitar. Nah, not today. <laughs> not today. Not today. All right. So, all right, you got another three seconds if you want any help to reach buyers. Three, two, one. All right, there's 18 folks on there. We'll make sure you get that. And before you All right, Sam.bid, go there. www.sam.bid. Pick the one that uh, that, that has the seven-day free trial for $249 a month. That's what you want right now. Uh, quick fuse, you can test drive it for 30 days. Make sure you do that. You can only do this if you have a GSA contract. Don't try to do it if you don't, because it won't work. And you can find ISI Federal, believe it or not, on LinkedIn. Uh -huh. and, uh, and on YouTube, we're all over the place. Our next session will be July 12th. I'm going to be taking the lead where we're going to be talking about a Q4 final push because that's going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not pushing, you're not going to win. So we shall see you next month. And can you believe this? We Oh, man, one minute over. I thought wait, we had Wait, wait, don't cut us off yet. Wait, wait, wait. So all right, don't quick, stop. Super okay. quick. A lot of target-rich information value in the chat. So click on the three dots to the right of the smiley face. Click on save chat, click on show in folder. And if in the unlikely event you didn't get that before Dave cuts us off because he's running to his next meeting, um, feel free to reach out and I just save the chat so I have everyone. Thanks. Julie Fred. says Thanks, something's Fred. blocked. What's blocked, Julie Branson? It's blocked. I don't know what that means. Um, I don't know. I was able to save the chat, so I'm good. All right. So that'll go. So everybody get a recap of this anyway. We'll get a recap out to everybody. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate you guys. Joy, Sally, great job. And we Bye. shall see you next month. And thanks for letting me get out of here so I can do the briefing at one o'clock. Good job. Good info, Sally. Bye. 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 Thank you. See you guys, Sally. Bye.